In this lesson, we're going to talk about the order of operations. But before we dive into the laws and the rules for the order of operations, we're going to start by just looking at a very, very simple expression. We're going to start with the expression 3 plus 6 divided by 2. Now, and I'm going to solve this in two different ways. So the first time I solve it, I'm going to start at the beginning. 3 plus 6 is 9 and then bring down the divided by 2. 9 divided by 2 is 4 and a half. So the final answer is 4 and a half. Now, I could also solve this by starting with the 6 divided by 2, which is 3. And then 3 plus 3 is 6. Now, notice that I have the same exact problem, just solved it in a little bit of a different order and I got two different answers. So is it possible when we're working in math to solve the same problem but come up with two different answers? And that answer is no. If you put this problem into your graphing calculator, you're gonna find that six is the correct answer. Four and a half is not the correct answer. And so for this reason, we have the order of operations in math. The order of operations is going to help us to make sure that we follow a set of rules in order to evaluate our expressions correctly so that we arrive at the right answer. Because as you can see, there are multiple ways to solve this or to evaluate this expression, and we can arrive at an incorrect answer if we don't follow the order of operations. So the order of operations is simply a set of rules that we need to follow when we're evaluating an expression that has more than one operation. And the rules are as follows. The first thing that you must do is evaluate expressions using grouping symbols. Um, anything inside of a grouping symbol. Grouping symbols can be parentheses, they can be brackets, um, they can even be fraction bars or radical symbols, which we'll talk about in another lesson. Once you've evaluated anything inside of a grouping symbol, then you can move on to your powers. When you think of a power, think of exponents, any um, term that has an exponent in it. We're then going to move on to multiplication or division, whichever comes first in the problem. And then addition or subtraction, again, whichever comes first. So, now a lot of you have been taught PEMDAS. PEMDAS is an easy way to remember the order of operations. And PEMDAS is an acronym, so you can see, sometimes we write it vertically here like this. So PEMDAS is P-E-M-D-A-S. It stands for parentheses, which does include all grouping symbols. And that has to be, um, made, you have to make sure that you include any grouping symbols, even if they're brackets, okay? Exponents come second, then multiplication or division, whichever comes first, and you work from left to right, and then addition or subtraction. So you can think of PEMDAS, you can think of please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, any little rhyme or acronym that you can think of that will help you to remember the order of operations. So let's take a look at an example together. And the first one that we're gonna look at is 38 minus four times seven plus eight divided by two. Now notice this is the division symbol. It looks like a fraction bar, and the fraction bar is a division symbol. So that's how we're going to think of it in this problem. So off to the side here, I'm just going to kind of write down the acronym PEMDAS so that I can remember which steps to perform first. So remember, for these types of problems, you don't want to start at the beginning and work through. You want to start with parentheses or grouping symbols. Now, in this particular problem, I don't have any grouping symbols. I don't have parentheses or brackets or anything of, of that nature. So when you don't have something, you just skip it and you go on to the next one, exponents. I don't have any exponents in this problem either, so we'll skip that one. The next one kind of goes together. It's multiplication or division and you want to work from left to right. So this problem has multiplication and division. The multiplication comes first, so that's what we're going to evaluate first. 
And when I use the order of operations, I always underline what I'm working on as I progress through the problem. So the multiplication part is 4 times 7, which is 28. And then I bring down the rest of the problem. Otherwise, sometimes I get confused and I make a mistake and it's just not worth it. So I always bring down the remaining part of the problem. Next, I still have division. I'm going to color code this a little bit for you. This was my first step. Um, division, I have 8 divided by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that part. And then I'm going to bring the rest of the problem down like I did before. It kind of gives me a new problem. So now I have all addition and subtraction left. So I've completed this section. And now it's addition or subtraction, whichever comes first. So now we can work from left to right. <clears throat> 38 minus 28 is 10. And then I'm going to bring down my plus 4. And 10 plus 4 is 14. So using the order of operations, I was able to evaluate this as an answer of 14. And again, you must make sure that you start with parentheses and work your way through. Notice that we started in the middle of the problem when we evaluated, and that's the correct way to do it.